Ladies and gentlemen, we are lagging out quite a bit. Well, that's no surprise. Uh, welcome back to Gothic 3. And since we have pretty much done everything we can do here for the moment, at least everything we can do without upsetting the balance of the war substantially, it's time to move on to greener pastures. Now, what we do have is a message from Sanford that we need to take to the rebel camp Okara. Where is it? Letter from Sanford. Roll in my position with the mercenaries and it's getting shakier. I will have to lie low for a while. Report again as soon as the situation is safe. And that's it. Well, no matter. We have uh, helped the rebel cause substantially without getting... Sanford in any deeper trouble, although we could blow the whistle on him if we were so inclined as to help the orcs a bit more. But now we need to find Okara, and if you look on the map, you'll find that Okara, in fact, uh, that's the wrong one, in fact, none of the uh, rebel camps are shown on here. Now, what you can do is just simply keep switching back and forth between. Uh, the map and the quest log, and the quest log does have the rebel camp locations on this small map here. The trouble is it doesn't show where you are in relation to it, so you do have to kind of make a reference. You just have to keep switching back and forth. Essentially, I think what you're looking for is this little blue dot here. I believe that's the cave that uh, Okara is in. But that's also unnecessary because, as it turns out, there is a fellow who's more than willing to take us there. If we can offer him some protection. Believe me, he's going to need a lot of protection on this. Hey you. You look different from the others here. You don't work for the orc mercenaries, do you? What do you mean I look different? I'm wearing their armor. I'm not a mercenary for the orcs. Oh, then maybe you are the one I'm looking for. You are one of the slaves, aren't you? Unfortunately. That wasn't always the case, but today there isn't much choice. Who are you looking for? I must get out of here, but the mercenaries are, are watching my every step. I need someone strong who can distract them while I make a run for it. It's pretty brave of you, telling me something like that. Ah, what have I got to lose? Either you help me now, or I'm done for. Maybe I can help you. I have to get to Okara, and as fast as possible. The rebels are waiting for me there. I have a very important message for them. What sort of message for the rebels? <sighs> Forget it. I was careless enough telling you about it at all. All right, I'll get you out of here. How are you going to do that? Run. I'll follow you. What? Now? Yes, damn it, run! Get moving! So long, fellas. Yep, it's that simple. <laughs> None of the mercenaries give a shit. Uh, Elber has made that very clear. None of them are willing to take any measure to do their job, so... You should uh, pick up any plants like this you find. These are actually quite useful. Quite valuable. Holy crap! What kind of ingenious plan was that? Run, he said. And like an idiot, I did, too. It worked. You are utterly insane. The mercenaries at the grain farm have other worries. You lunatic! I don't understand. You don't have to understand. It worked. That's enough of that. You want to go to Okara, don't you? Yes. But I'll never make it alone. Okara is awfully far away, and the area is full of dangerous beasts. I'll accompany you to Okara. Run. What? Now? Say, are you trying to mess with me? Run already, you idiot! And that's that. Unfortunately, this time it doesn't work quite as smoothly because Rufus is going to run through a shit ton of monsters on the way. Most concerning are the wolves. Oh, uh, you might encounter a snapper, such as that one. This one we might be able to run past, though. Since they don't aggro quite as easily as they used to. Yep, yeah, that's fine. This one's probably going to be trouble. Mm. 
No, I guess not. Cool. Uh, if you do get close enough, of course, they will aggro without even making that threatening posture. Now, I think there's going to be a bridge over here. A lot of couple ruined buildings here. Obviously, just small homesteads that the orcs have come along and trashed. So once we cross this bridge, this is where we need to be worried. Uh, there might be scavengers around, but I don't think they're going to be too much of a problem. As I said, it's the wolves that are the big threat. Rufus will wait up. So let's see if we can prepare some countermeasures. Ah, damn, I don't really want to use that if I can avoid it. The good thing is Rufus is actually quite robust. He's not a very good fighter, but he can take a lot of hits. Let's see if we can start something. No such thing as a nest of wolves. Now, as I said, there are a fucking lot of them. I was hoping to get a headshot there, but no such luck. They do have a lot of trouble crossing this bridge, though. So you can use that to your advantage. It is kind of cheap, and uh, there is someone who said he didn't want me using exploits as much. That was one that, you know, kind of hard to avoid. You have to make a tactical retreat, and it's not my fault that these wolves cannot cross my only escape route, really. Uh, we also, actually, quite handily... Got one or two of the wolves distracted by the scavengers. So that's another method you can use. It actually worked out much more smoothly than I'm used to. Fireballs are just a tremendous boon. Except there are a few, quite a few more. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize there were that many. Hang on, we gotta prep for this. Eat it. And they're all coming after me again. Retreat! So I'm gonna get an attack and then... There we go, that was quite nice. Just trying to bait an attack so I can uh, follow up with that. Right now I don't have enough stamina to do that move anymore. Ouch. Ah, I didn't get him. Fuck. Alright. That is troublesome. Oh my god, they're closer than I thought. Holy shit, that hurt so much. Back off! Why are you targeting that one? Is that the one I wanted? Wolves are the worst things. Got that one. Oh, this is tiresome. How close is it? Too close. Oh, he's falling. Alright, whatever. Uh, as I said, if you run too far away from Rufus, he won't disappear. But everyone's going to reset back to full health. Uh, that one was just chilling for some reason. Yeah, the wolves back at full health, too. Yeah, see, that's what I hate about this attack. It's just... Its tracers are very precise. It doesn't do much more damage than well done. that does. What the... Oh, you tricky bastard. Man, that attack just rules. Yeah, that didn't work. Yeah! That was some teamwork there. Nice work, Rufus. Wolf skins, you're gonna wanna loot them all, because they're all quite useful. Or quite valuable, at least. There aren't a whole lot of uses for them in this game. Of course, it's still more, more use for them than the previous games had, so it's a start. What they really need to integrate more in Piranha Bytes games is crafting more than just swords. 
Crafting swords has always been a thing. But beyond that, there hasn't been a whole lot. Risen 2 did allow you to craft guns, but... You know, that was one of two weapons even available in the game, so... It's not too exciting. And this game... All the Gothic games only had swords. Uh, the only credit I will give to Arcania is how extensive of a crafting system it had. The only problem it had was that in order to craft a particularly rare or useful item, you often need, needed another weapon that was just as rare or useful. So it didn't really help a whole lot. Thank Enos. We made it. All right. You can relax now. Thank you, friend. I will never forget this. Thanks are nice. Rewards are better. Hmm. You can have everything I still own. Here, take it all. This is Okara. Yes, this is it. Fifteen gold? Your sword's worth more than that. It's not everything you own, you fucking lying bastard. So this is Okara. There's a big net over it for some reason. You can walk on the net. There's not really much point to this. I guess... I mean, you would think they'd try to camouflage it. Then again, the noise coming from down there. Probably give it away either way. But uh, it is out... In kind of the middle of nowhere. There's no cities quite near it. Although it doesn't take long to get to Sildin. But, strangely enough, even though this is actually closer to Sildin than Montera, Sildin has greater concerns with it, yet another group of rebels. So, Okara is not even a... You know, it's not even on their minds. But if you want to get in, obviously you can't get in through the top there. You just have to come around here and there's a... Excuse me. There's an opening. But before you go inside, you should pick up the teleporter stone. Right out here on this rock. And those guards are pointless. Uh, here's Rufus, he's made it. He's a uh, quite swag motherfucker. And one of the most important NPCs here is the smith, Manic. A new face. Welcome to Okara. We can use every man here. You're a blacksmith? Smith, cook, prospector, and heaven knows what else. The fewer people we have, the more tasks I need to take over. You need more people? Yes, we do. Badly. Lately, our leader, Roland, has been using up all of our reserves. We can use everyone we can get. I'll get some more people for you. If you know any free humans who would agree to fight for the king, bring them here. Look around Okara and on the farms of Montera. I'm sure there must be some lost souls out there who would agree to come here. Rufus the farmer has a message for you. Very good. He's probably bringing news from Montera. Thanks for getting him here safely, friend. Where can I find your leader? Go down into the mine. His cave is down there. I need weapons. Hmm. <laughs> this here is the largest rebel weapons forge in the Midlands. I could certainly sell you something. Show me your weapons. And here's what he's got. More just pretty typical weapons. He does have the crawler plate armor uh, blueprint. Which I could buy if I wanted to, but it requires some stuff that I think is a bit more difficult to get. So we'll wait on that for the moment. Don't need this anymore. i uh, keep a few of those, I suppose. I uh, don't need the transformation potions. Those are fairly useless. Keep Shadow Beast skins. I think there might be a quest for these. But I cannot, for the life of me, remember where. That's really all we got. Just, uh, just really quick. I want to see what the crawler plate armor actually requires as far as materials go. For some reason, he sells more than one. I could make some of these. I don't know why it needs booze. Okay, it needs a leather breast tank. That's another piece of armor. But that one's a bit more common, albeit it's pretty expensive. Uh, it needs five big crawler plates, which you can only get from mine crawler warriors. Uh, six small crawler plates, which are just from the standard mine crawlers. And six snapper leather. 
So it's not something we're really probably ever going to use. Certainly good if you're a hunter, especially for its uh, hunting skill requirements. So if that's the route you're playing, that could definitely be a very useful armor. Okay, so just to put some money in our pocket, let's make a few swords. Actually... I don't know why the regular longsword needs magic ore. Let's just make five of these for now. I don't want to use up all the booze anyway. But this is an iron mine, actually. And so we can get iron from a few veins around here. Nothing too special, but we need the miners to go to sleep first, so... Do I have a pickaxe? I don't think I do. I do, actually. I have six. Okay, here's one of them. And there he goes. He's off the bed. Now. So, this is where the game... This is where Piranha Bytes games have started to give you... Uh, when you mine, you get a very set... You get the exact same amount of... Uh, mineral from the veins every single time. If you did not have the prospecting skill, you would only get five from iron ore veins. Since we have the prospecting skill, everything is doubled. So we get ten from these. You would, you'll get four from gold or ore veins. And you get eight from sulfur veins, all with the prospecting skill. So the prospecting skill is probably the most lucrative skill to get in this game. You certainly make a lot more in terms of these uh, precious metals than you would otherwise. Let's see if we can get these guys to leave. Since we're standing here, these guys will just kind of watch us. But yeah, now they're off. So uh, The genome engine is where it started with the problem where when an uh, NPC is scripted to be using something, even if they're not actively using it, it's kind of locked, so you can't use it until their script is broken. And uh, so he was scripted to be mining this, which is why he was standing in front of it with a pickaxe on the shoulder while he was watching us. So until we got farther enough away, his script would not end, and uh, only then we could use it. And that's why we can't use the exploit that I really loved in the previous Gothic games, where you just have to wake someone up and then you can use their bed. Uh, this guy was mining this one. I just heard a shadow beast. I think there's actually shadow beasts above us. Which is uh, kind of annoying. The In a lot of cases, sounds don't... The sounds travel through objects and landscape that they really shouldn't be. And that's just kind of a flaw. Something they can't really fix. So we can hear all the animals that are on the surface above the cave right now. Can't make anything really, except some uh, healing plants. Let's see if we can learn anything from this bookshelf. Here it says something about alchemy. Alright, something about alchemy. I'm going to loot this, but you definitely do not want to get carried away looting things. It's quite dangerous. Uh, if you get accosted, then you could get in a lot of trouble. Now I'm going to just try something really quick. Everyone's asleep. It's not really that important. Alright, I forgot. You don't need to open the character menu to do Marvin mode. Hang on a second. There we go. I'm going to save really quick, but I'm going to try and find out which F key it is to advance time. It is... F6. Now, for some reason, it tells you the temperature instead of, like, the actual time of day. 
the temperature is how you can tell. Obviously, the hottest time of day is the afternoon. The coldest is midnight. Or possibly dawn. But, uh, you just press that button. You see the moon traveling very fast. The sun should be coming up very soon. I don't know where the sun is. And it's raining. Fuck. So the temperature is a mechanic that we really don't have to worry about in the uh, mainland of Mertana. The temperature is a concern in Nordmar and in Varent. In Nordmar, when it's uh, any time except the middle of the day, and if it's cloudy too, I think this actually uh, affects it. But the temperature is so cold that your character cannot recover stamina properly. So only in the middle of the day when it's sunny will your character have full stamina regeneration. And the same applies for uh, being out in Varen in the middle of the day. Since it's so hot, your character cannot uh, recover his stamina. And in both cases, you benefit highly from having having um, water on hand at all times or endurance potions to keep your stamina peaked. I'll turn the Marvin mode back off just so you don't have to worry. Now Roland is another one who got his face changed and if I recall correctly this might be another face from Arcania but it does not look quite familiar. There are only three male faces in Arcania but it's been a while since I played it, so I can't remember if this is one of them. I heard that a new man entered our camp. It is said that he shows promise. Hmm. I see they do not exaggerate. Are you in charge here? I hold Okara together as best I can. It is hellish. Especially since we have already lost more than half our men. What happened to your men? Montera has decimated us. Since the siege by the orcs, we reconnoiter the city. Up to now, the orcs have discovered and destroyed almost all of our outposts. I have sent any men I could spare to find a way to the capital, Vengard. Are you a former paladin? Yes, I was a warrior of the king. Like all my comrades in arms in Gotha, our arrogance was as great as our ignominious defeat at the hands of the orcs. Nevertheless, I still wear my armor with pride. Tell me more about Gotha. Gotha lies in the east, between Faring and Montera. Once, it was the headquarters of the paladins of the land, until it was overrun by the orcs. Today, the dead roam the streets of Gotha. The orc shamans laid a terrible curse on the city. Why haven't you ever attacked Montera? I am afraid we simply waited too long for the opportune moment. What is your plan? We need to contact the king. In order to stay out of the hands of the orcs, he has barricaded himself in the keep of Vengard, the capital. I do not know what Robar is planning. We need a teleporter stone from Gotha in order to find out. The stone takes one directly into the king's capital. Where are the people you sent to find a way to Vengard now? I sent them to Gotha. I believe that was the most foolish thing I have ever done. I have a message from Sanford the warehouse keeper in Montera. It's about time, he reported. Well done. We need more people of your stripe. What sort of curse is on Gotha? At first, the battle for Gotha went in our favor, until the orc shamans conjured up that miserable demon. That spawn of hell swept through the streets of Gotha. The monster transformed every honest human into a soulless creature. It was as though hell itself fell upon us. All we could do was flee. Gotha has been lost to us forever. I will take care of Gotha. Don't be a fool. The demon is certainly still there. You had better stay away from him. Let's conquer Montera. Ha! <sighs> we would not survive a frontal assault, my friend. 
With these few people, we wouldn't even get through the outer ring of the city. You must find another way to drive the orcs from Montera. What should I do? It's not very easy to uh, uproot, you know, an entire legion of orcs without some show of force. Which so he will teach you how to fight. He actually teaches you probably most of the fighting skills in the game. Some of the sure. upper tier fighting skills you can only learn from. Uh, oh, he has no money whatsoever. Yeah, some of the upper tier fighting skills you can only learn from uh, either the orcs or the fighters in Nordmar. Alright, so that's everything we need to know from him. Uh, giving him Sanford's letter, of course, cancels the uh, counter quest for the mercenaries where you give the letter to Mark and expose Sanford as the rebel contact. I'll tell you what, we'll just make the rest of those keep one booze. And selling these will give us a pretty penny. Show me. Yeah, 140 strength. I'm not sure I'm ever really going to use strength again. But I will just hold on to one just because I would really like to use it if I could. The Ruby Blade is one of the first uh, magic ore weapons you'll probably be able to use or make. But uh, you do have to concern yourself with the fact that in order to make a magic ore weapon, you do need that. Uh, you do need to be taught that. So they're not made quite the same. Uh, there's nobody else here we can really talk to right now. But we have gotten a mission from. Uh, manic to try and recruit more people for Montera. And uh, let me think. I think there are about six people you can do that with. Uh, that's not including Rufus, who, uh, who sort of counts as one, I think. I'm not sure if he really does so, but at any rate, he's another person you can bring here. Uh, Mannix had checked the forests and the farms of Montera. Rufus is the only one from Montera. The rest of them are just hanging around in the woods out here, and you have to be quite thorough in your search for them. The first and quickest one, and probably one of the easiest ones, is down here. Well, this guy's armor has changed quite a bit wearing the bandit armor for some reason. He used to wear the heavy rebel armor, but I guess it makes sense that he's not wearing that because he was not a rebel. You look strong. You're just what I need. Looks like you're not all that puny yourself. I'm Randall. I'm a fighter and I want to join the rebels. I was on my way to Akara when I stumbled across this mine. What are your plans? Do you see that cave over there? It contains what must be the richest mine I have ever seen. Boy, you can find everything there. Gold, iron, sulfur. There's just one little problem. What sort of problem? The mine is full of beasts. That's why there isn't anyone else here plundering the mine. But if we join up, we could clean out the mine. What do you think? The rebels in Okara need strong men like you. Yeah, damn, I know that. You really think I would abandon the fat booty in this mine? You're out of your mind. Let's empty the mine. That's what I want to hear. Get ready and follow me. Now, of course, Randall's a very tough fighter, so he is a good tank for this. But the biggest concern... In fact, I think the only enemies in here are actually just mind crawlers. So if you let him try and tank everything, you should ah, be able to ah. be in pretty good shape. Ah. All right, now for some reason, as long as you don't hit the mind crawler twice in a row, uh, he will still focus on Randall. But now I have two more after me. 
And of course you, 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 they block, so that is fucking annoying. Might be better off using this sword here. <laughs> fucking hell, god damn it! Get moving! Sack of shit, get moving! That's not what I wanted to do. Alright, fireballs are the best way to deal with these guys, because fuck them. God, that was annoying. Now, if the mine crawlers do block, you can actually block them too, I think. Let's test it. I think so. It doesn't make the blocking sound, but he's not hurting me. Alright, now he's focused on Randolph, so we can poison him. And uh, we can switch back to this, which does a bit more damage. And wobble. One filthy beast less. So as I said, Randall can tank reasonably well. You do have to try and keep him healthy though, because he's not quite smart enough. And he's running through the wall. He's not very smart, but he is quite magical apparently. I dearly hope he can find his way out of there, because that is really annoying. It might not be coming out because I'm not close enough, but... See, if I can, uh, if I get something else's attention, maybe he'll come out. Oh, there he is. God damn it, I woke up a bunch more. No, oh, I just hit Randall. Go. Well, that takes care of that. All right, you get a fair number of crawler plates from this, but it's not really all that useful. Well, did I promise too much? Just look at the size of those gold nuggets. Now what? You go and clear the rest of the mine, and I'll start plundering it. That doesn't sound like a fair deal. Screw it, guy. I'm leading some of these your way. You gotta help me. What are they all agitated about? Oh, you know what? I think they're actually... Oh, boy. I got three of them. I think they're actually targeting... Hey, buddy. There's there are some... more of the beasts. Yeah, there's a lot more of them. All right, uh, I'm running out of stamina pretty quick here. God, they're hideous. Oh, come on. <sighs> Seriously? I don't really have enough mana left. That's all I got. Alright, there we go. That's all I need. I can handle it from here. Now, as I said, uh, I think I said before, if you don't have enough stamina to perform an attack, it's so much slower. So you do have to worry about that. But thankfully, this thing's got enough range to make up for that. All right, Randall's still working on the last one, I think. And that'll be the end of it.
Where the hell did you... Oh, he's fighting with his pickaxe now. Why do I target him? I don't want to target him. Stop targeting Randall! He's a fucking... Oh my god, that is my... One of my biggest complaints about this game. Is just the targeting system. For some reason it targets... Like, neutrals. People like Randall, when their names are in white, it targets them much more readily than it will target a hostile. It's just really irritating. The mine is clean. You mean there aren't any more beasts alive to bother us? Very good, boy. Now we can ransack the mine undisturbed. I'll give you 300 gold coins. Will you go to Okara now? All right, I'll go. In the meantime, you keep an eye on our mine. But when I come back, I don't want the whole mine plundered, got it? Sure. Oh, fuck off. I already paid you. Alright, now, what we're going to do... I'm going to just take a quick look at what I have so far. I have 76 iron ore. Ten of that is from one vein that... No, I actually didn't mine it yet, so... Everything I get from this point on is going to be from this mine. I have 76 iron ore. And I have no... Gold, sulfur, or magic ore whatsoever. So let's see what we make out with. I'm just going to do a before and after shot. I'm not going to show you the entire mine at Plunder. Unless there's something quite important here. Uh, but you do have to bear in mind that there's a lot of nuggets and stuff on the ground. So you want to grab those too. Alright, now let's get started. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I have just mined everything in here. So unless I miss something, we should have everything. The only thing I left behind is this one piece here. Is because I wanted to point out something funny about this. This one ore piece, or iron ore lump, used to be on top of this little um, monolith here. Obelisk, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that was actually quite funny, because the only way you could get it was using a telekinesis spell. Which I don't believe we have. Yes, we do. So the only way you could get it was with telekinesis. I feel like it might have been placed up there because I remember in early interviews, uh, pre-release interviews for Gothic 3, the uh, Piranobites, whoever there, whoever was in the interview, I can't remember who it was, uh, was talking about how he was asked a question on how physics would play in Gothic 3 because shortly before Gothic 3 was released, uh, we had Oblivion, which uh, allowed you to manipulate physics quite a lot. And so they were asked how physics would play in this game since they learned that Havoc physics were going to be used. And uh, Piranobite said that while it was not going to be as extensive as Oblivion was, there were situations where you would need to exploit the physics a little bit. So I feel like their intention was that you would shoot it down, shoot this down with an arrow. But since they never actually programmed that, they never really uh, established the physics to work that way. The only time you can actually manipulate physics is right after an enemy dies, you can kick his corpse around for a little while until it completely stops moving and then uh, it's just static. So, and I think that was why that was up there. And uh, it's definitely not worth a telekinesis scroll just to take that down. And the only other thing I left behind here is this chest because I just wanted you guys to see what was inside. Uh, not much. Another one of those spells though, so that's very helpful. Alright, so let's see what we... Let's just check out our hall here. So I said there were... I said there were... Um, I had 76 iron ore to begin with. I believe that says I have 188. It's kind of hard to read. Uh, I think I also have 33 gold nuggets. 5 magic ore, because there's not really much magic ore in here, to be honest. I don't think there was... Yeah, there was only one vein, I think, of magic ore, and I must have just picked up another piece somewhere else. And then uh, 49 pieces of sulfur. However, in addition to that, there's the stuff you loot off the ground. Some of those are just the regular lumps of iron, or the regular chunks of iron, uh, or gold nuggets, etc. Then there's stuff like this. Iron ore lumps sulfur lump. These annoy me. These have no useful purpose in the game whatsoever. They're literally just loot. You can only sell them. 
And there's no point to it. Why do they, why do they make a separate item? A separate useless item of the same mineral. That just irritates me. Now, the w one of the things I heard in this game is that these are actually, like, unrefined. Like, these iron ore lumps, they're, they're unrefined. These lumps of sulfur are unrefined. They're just not in a usable state where you can actually use them in alchemy or smithing or anything. And uh, any of you who are... Uh, any of you who play fantasy or are, like, that interested in fantasy stuff or... Um, you know, old medieval era, um, you know, stuff like that. You might understand how forging really works uh, when you want to, oh, when you mine a metal, what you're generally going to get is something called ore, which is uh, a piece of rock streaked with the metal that you're looking for. So when they call when they talk about ore in this game, that's really the wrong way to use it, and I feel like they just kind of stuck with it just for um, just for the sake of canon. And so ore is just the metal streaked with, or it's a rock streaked with metal, and the only way you can use it is to melt the metal out of the rock, dispose of the rock, and uh, then you have the metal. In a in a more purified form, and that's what all this is supposed to be. The problem that I have with this is that the iron ore that we can use, we mine straight out of the rock, so we haven't smelted it at all. We have not melted the metal out of the rock, so I don't understand why what we mine ourselves is in a usable form already, whereas the stuff we pick off off, off the ground is apparently not refined, and we are never able to actually turn it into something useful. That just bothers me. Like, iron ore lumps, just sulfur lumps, they have no purpose in this game whatsoever. Now here's a ripper beast. I believe there's more than one, though. So we should, uh... That's gonna be nasty. Try to keep doing headshots on this fool. Oh, Jesus, there's a third one. Alright. Time for some of this. Oh, right in the face. Boom. Yike! Expecting it to hit the other guy. Back, you devils! No. Damn, these guys are very susceptible to the staff spinny attack. Alright, well, that worked out quite well. Now, something I actually have not looked into for a long time. I think this valley down here... Oh, hey. Enough meat to winter. So I just got an achievement. I think this valley down here is actually full of... Full of... Ogres. Or something around here is. I remember, I think, uh... Like, one of the first times that... Yep, there he is. Well, the first times I played this game, I actually just accidentally stumbled in here. I fell down here. And I just fell among all these ogres. Oh, he spotted me. Ogres are bastards. I don't believe I can really... Yeah, I can barely do any damage to them. It would certainly be worthwhile to get rid of all these guys. I'm just going to retreat... Uh, replenish my mana because it's going to be easier to use fireballs to take care of these guys. Alright, buddy, round two. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the kind of damage I like to see. I'm just not going to waste more mana. It's not worth it to me. There we go. That's a decent bit of experience, too. They carry a lot of uh, alcohol of various forms. And they apparently have weapons. Weapons we cannot use. Uh, where is it? Oh, I guess we can use it. Ogre Morningstar. That is no Morningstar, but explain that to an ogre. 
These are probably the heaviest obtainable or reasonably obtainable weapon in the game. And you can never pick them up in a form that's not worn. So these are completely useless. It's very easy to find a weapon that does more damage than that without having such high requirements. I uh, need to top off some mana some more. My biggest complaint is that they didn't really add enough things that restore mana. Alright, now what should we do here? They're not close enough for this spell to be useful. Fear spell, I don't think that would uh I don't think that would work against them. 